So today's episode comes to you courtesy of Sparky1232, who's been supporting this channel as a general tier patron. I truly couldn't do this without the support from amazing patrons like Sparky1232, so again, Sparky, thank you so much. And for the personalized deck tech, Sparky1232 chose Miri the Cursed. Miri is a 3-2 vampire cat with flying, first strike, and haste that costs 2 black black. Whenever Miri the Cursed deals common damage to a creature, put a plus one counter on Miri the Cursed. So, Miri is a commander that is quick and evasive and that can grow throughout the game. So, when deciding what direction to take this commander, Voltron seemed like a good choice. So, we're going to suit Miri up, hit incredibly hard, and take our opponents out in no time. Now, really quick, every single card in this deck, including this commander, is less than $1, so it's a very budget-friendly deck. On top of that, the deck list link is in the description below, so make sure you check that out if you're interested in this deck. And with those cards in this deck, I'm going to be breaking this deck down into different tactics to show you how this deck works and how we're going to win with it. So with all that said, let's jump into it. First up, there's Wayfarer's Bobble. That's right, Wayfarer's Bobble is finally budget again. Pay two and tap and sacrifice it to get a basic land card into play tapped. So essentially, turn to land ramp for any color identity. But of course, we've got access to plenty of great mana rocks as well that can help us ramp too, like Felwar Stone, Mind Stone, Arcane Signet, Empty Fly, Liquid Metal Torque, Star Compass, Prismatic Lens, Charcoal Diamond, and Everflowing Chalice. But after we've ramped, well, what are we going to do? Well, we want to hit really hard with our commander, so let's suit Miri up again with things like Black Raider Forge, Last Rife, and Strata Scythe. Black Raider Forge is going to give her plus and plus one for each land we control. And then Last Rife is very similar. It's got Living Weapon, so it's going to come attached with a 0-0 germ token. But more importantly, it says Equip Creature gets plus plus one for each swamp we control. And yeah, essentially every single one of our lands is going to be a swamp, so this can pump a ton. And then Strata Scythe has, when it enters the battlefield, search your life for a land card, exile, then shuffle your library, so again a swamp, and it says equip creature gets plus plus one for each land on the battlefield with the same name as the exiled card. So keep in mind this counts our opponent's swamps as well. Next up, there are other pieces of equipment that actually care about things outside of lands like Imperial Plate, Hand of Vecna, and Bone Horde. Imperial Plate's going to give a quick creature plus plus one for each card in our hand. And then Hand of Vecna essentially does the same thing. And then Bone Horde has Living Weapon, so again, we have a germ attached to it. And says equipped creature gets plus X plus X for X the number of creature cards in all graveyards. So of course, the longer the game goes, the larger this is going to get, and the larger of the pump effect it's going to have on our commander. But of course, we've got some fantastic set pump effects with cards like Hero's Blade, O Naginata, and Loxen and Warhammer. Hero's Blade says equipped creature gets plus three plus two. Whenever a legendary creature enters the battlefield under your control, you may attach Hero's Blade to it. So this is a great way to just pump our commander right away. And then Onaganata can only be attached to a creature with power 3 or greater, but our commander meets that requirement, and it's going to give her plus 3 plus 0 and trample. Speaking of which, there's Loxen Warhammer, which gives plus 3 plus 0, trample, and lifelink, which can be a fantastic way for us to pad our life total. Moving on, we can also pump our commander with 4 Bearer's Blade, which is going to give plus 3 plus 0, vigilance, and trample. And vigilance can be especially effective with our commander, because again, if we can keep our commander back for blocking 2, we can continue to grow our commander while protecting ourselves by dishing out combat damage. So we're also going to be running Sword of Vengeance, which gives plus 2, plus 0, First Strike, Vigilance, Trample, and Haste. And then Haunted Cloak is also going to give Vigilance, Trample, and Haste as well. And obviously, I should have mentioned this before, but Trample can of course be a great way to push damage through. Especially when we pump our commander with things like Golemskin Gauntlets and Cranial Plating. Golemskin Gauntlets is going to give Equip Creature plus 1, plus 0 for each equipment attached to it. And then Cranial Plating says Equip Creature gets plus 1, plus 0 for each artifact you control. So yeah, each of these can pump our commander for a ton, and they cost very little to get down and equip. But out of all the cards in this deck, in my opinion, there is one that stands above the rest. And that would be the Golden Pig of this deck, which is the number one card out of our 99. And the golden pick for this deck is Masterwork of Ingenuity. It's an equipment that costs one, and it says you may have Masterwork of Ingenuity enter the battlefield as a copy of any equipment on the battlefield. So this is essentially an additional copy of our best equipment out there. And even more so on top of that, it is a cheap copy, only being, you know, one mana essentially, and it is one that can be a copy of an opponent's equipment as well. This is an incredible card that can really help us out in a ton of situations, and it is definitely the golden pig of this deck. But we're not quite done with our equipment just yet. The 
because we're also going to be running some ways to give our commander double strike with cards like Fire Shrieker, Brass Knuckles, and Grappling Hook. Fire Shrieker is just going to straight up give double strike. Brass Knuckles says Quip Creature has double strike as long as it has two or more equipment attached to it. And Grappling Hook says Quip Creature has double strike whenever Quip Creature attacks, you may have target creature block at this turn if able. So with this, if we really want to force a block on a flyer or a creature with reach, we can. Next up, we also have Gavel the Righteous, which says being of combat on your turn, put a charge counter on Gavel the Righteous. Quip Creature gets plus one free charge counter on Gavel the Righteous. And as long as it's got four more counters on it, Quip Creature has double strike. So this can pump our commander further and of course grant double strike at a certain time. And speaking of double though, there's Inquisitor's Flail, which says if equipped creature deal combat damage, it deals double that damage instead. And if another creature deal combat damage to equipped creature, it deals double that damage to equipped creature instead. Now, keep in mind, our commander does have first strike already, so it's going to be difficult for our opponents to actually deal damage to our commander. And by dishing out double damage, well, this can help our commander hit incredibly hard, especially in combination with, you know, something like double strike. Because if our commander has this and double strike, it's essentially going to be hitting four times as hard. So without any pump effects, that's going to be 12 damage, which is a two-shot KO on any opponent. And with a simple pump effect that maybe even just gives plus three power, like, you know, say, Onaganata, that is going to be a one-shot KO. Because our commander would have six power and double strike, hitting once and then twice for 12 damage apiece, being 24 damage in total. So yeah, this can get out of hand in no time. And speaking of things getting out of hand... We can also give our commander Death Touch, which works incredibly well with that first strike, or, you know, again, obviously, the double strike as well if we have it. Regardless, a card like Gorgon's Head is a very simple one that says Quick Creature has Death Touch. With first strike and Death Touch, our commander is nearly impossible to take out in combat. Because all we need to do is assign one point of damage to each of our opponent's creatures that are blocking it, or that it's blocking, and they're just going to be gone. And of course, our commander hits first, so good luck to them. Next up, Quiet a Spike can help us out in multiple ways. It says Quip Creature has Death Touch. Whenever Quip Creature deals combat to a player, that player loses half their life rounded up. So this can actually help us take out an opponent, you know, outside of commander damage by helping them, you know, just lose a ton of life very quickly. And then Reaper's Talisman says, whenever Quip Creature attacks, it gains Death Touch until end of turn. And whenever it attacks alone, defending player loses two life and you gain two life. So on top of giving our commander Death Touch when we're attacking with her, we also can just pad her life toll with this too. Next up though, how about another way to protect our commander in combat outside of Death Touch? Like, you know, just getting Miri through with cards like Key to the City, Prowler's Helm, and Sky Blinder Staff. Key to the City says, tap, discard a card up to one target creature, can't be blocked this turn, and when it becomes untapped, we can pay two if we do draw a card. So this is a fantastic way to make our commander unblockable on top of helping us rummage. Next up, Prowler's Helm says, Quip Creature can't be blocked except by walls, and yeah, not many people out there are running walls except for, you know, that Arcadia's the strategist player, and even if they do have walls, unless they have reach, they're not going to be able to block our commander. Or should I say Reach or Flying, which, you know, okay, there's not too many walls that have either of those anyways. And speaking of Flyers, Skyblinder Staff says Equip Creature gets plus one with zero and can't be blocked by creatures with flying. So unless our opponent's creature has Reach, our commander is essentially unblockable. But of course, we can also utilize some equipment to protect our commander as well with cards like Mask of Avacyn, which gives plus one plus two, and Hexproof, and Swift of Boots, which gives Hexproof and Haste. And we're not quite done with protecting our commander just yet because we also have Ring of Zathrid and Blessing of Leeches. Ring of Zathrid has pay to regenerate equipped creature at the beginning of your upkeep, put a plus one counter equipped creature if it's black. So this can protect our commander and grow it throughout the game. And then Blessing of Leeches has flash and says at the beginning of your upkeep you lose one life and we can pay zero to regenerate enchanted creature. That's a very small amount of life to pay to regenerate our commander on demand. But now let's talk about how we're actually going to get to all these great cards. So first up, let's talk about some more equipment like Poet's Quill, Mask of Memory, and Mask of Grizzlebrand. First up, Poet's Quill says when it enters the battlefield, learns so that's essentially Rummage in Commander, and it says Quick Creature gets plus plus one and has lifelink. Next up, Mask of Memory says whenever Quick Creature deals combination to a player, you may draw two cards if you do discard a card. And again, the vast majority of time with this commander, we can get through on at least one opponent with that flying, and again, there are plenty of other ways to get our commander through. And then Mask of Grizzlebrand says Quick Creature has flying and lifelink, and whenever Quick Creature dies, you may pay X life or X as its power if you do draw X cards. So, again, that lifelink can gain us a lot of life throughout the game, and of course, we can utilize that life to draw a ton of cards if our commander's ever dealt with. And of course, we can also utilize our life with cards like Sign and Blood, Read the Bones, and Blood Pact. Sign and Blood's gonna have us draw two cards and lose two life. Read the Bones says Scry two, you draw two cards, lose two life, and Blood Pact, well, says target player draws two cards and loses two life. 
And of course, we're not done with losing life and drawing cards just yet, so we also have Succumb to Temptation, Ambition's Cost, and Ancient Craving. Succumb to Temptation is going to have us draw two cards and lose two life. Ambition's Cost has us draw three cards and lose three life, and Ancient Craving does the exact same thing. And finally, we also have Promise of Power in Necrologia. Promise of Power says choose one, you draw five cards and lose five life, or put an XX Black Demon creature token with flying in the battlefield where X the number of cards in your hand as this token enters the battlefield, and we have Entwine 4-4. Four, four. So if we want both halves, we can. And then Necrologia has cast a spell only during your end step, as it will cost to cast a spell, pay X life, draw X cards. So this is a great way to draw a ton of cards. Moving on, we're not running many creatures in this deck, but the creatures that we are running are really fantastic with Brass Squire, Sanger Vampire, and Steel Hellkite. Brass Squire has tap attached target equipment you control to target creature you control. So yeah, this can save us a ton of mana throughout the game and can equip some massive things to our commander for free. And then Sparky1232 also requests that Sangir Vampire be included in this deck and is a fantastic one. A 4-4 Vampire Flying that says whenever a creature dealt damage by Sangir Vampire this turn dies, but a plus one counter on Sangir Vampire. So yeah, Miri is definitely reminiscent of this fantastic card. Next up, Steel Hellcat is a 5-5 Dragon with Flying that has pay 2, it gets plus 1 with 0 until end of turn, and pay X destroy each non-land permanent converted mana cost X whose controller was dealt combat damage by Steel Hellcat this turn, activate this ability only once each turn. So again, with that flying, we can usually get through on at least one player, and this can wipe out a lot of things. And speaking of wiping things out... With Feed the Swarm, we can destroy target creature and enchantment opponent controls, and we lose life equal to that permanent's mana value. Introduction to Annihilation is going to have us exile target non lane permanent, its controller draws a card. And then Unstable Ombus is actually a mana rock that can help us out. It can either tap for any color, so we can pay 7 to tap and sacrifice to destroy target permanent. Next up, we've got Defile, which is going to give target creature minus 1, minus 1 until end of turn for each swamp we control. And again, we're running a ton of swamps in this deck. Next up, there's Hero's Downfall, which says destroy target creature or Planeswalker. And then Language says all creatures get minus 4, minus 4 until end of turn. And while Miri obviously can get taken out by this as well, with just, you know, a simple pump effect that can get its toughness up to 5, it's going to survive. Next up, we can also wipe out a lot of creatures with things like Hex in Garrett's Wake and Neverall's Disc. Hex is going to destroy 6 target creatures, whereas in Garrett's Wake is going to destroy all creatures and all planeswalkers we don't control. Then Neverall's Disc can get rid of a lot of things, and it's just Battlefield tapped by paying 1, we can tap to destroy all artifacts, creatures, and enchantments. So this is very much a panic button, but yeah, there are definitely going to be times where this comes in handy. But now that we've gone through every single non-lane card in this deck, let's talk about the price. Like I mentioned at the beginning of this episode, every single card, including the commander, is less than $1, so it's a very budget-friendly deck at just $28.54. And keep in mind, you can actually save even more if you've already got the basic lands for this deck because they're being included in that cost at 10 cents a piece. And speaking of potentially saving even more, you might be able to save even more by buying this deck on TCG Player and utilizing heavily played and damaged cards because of course those cards need a home too. That being said, this estimated cost does not include the cost of shipping, which might vary depending upon where you live. And with that, the show is coming to a close, so it's my turn here from you. So in the comments below, let me know what your thoughts on this episode are. And as always, thanks again and have a good one. This show and episodes like this one are possible thanks to viewers like you. If you're looking for an easy way to help support this show, make sure that you like, share, and subscribe. Also, hit that bell notification icon so you don't miss any new episodes. You can also go check out our playmats and other merchandise at thecommandersquarters.com. We also have a ton of brand new t-shirt designs in stock, so make sure you check out those as well. Another easy way to support this show is with our TCG Player affiliate links. So whether you're buying a deck or individual cards, you can use this general link right here or one in the description. And the final way that you can support this show is by supporting us directly by becoming a patron. There are many benefits to being a patron, and I truly couldn't do this without all their support.